this is what I asked you to start with and what I asked you to grab, right? Now, what I'm seeing a lot of as I walk around is something a bit like this. Okay, now, um, let's consider this, okay? Now, literally, I'm seeing that with very few markings on there, and partly because you're not sure what to mark on there. Um, I can see a few problems with this graph, and let's try and unpack it, okay? The first problem is, what, what is this? What is that? What, what do we define these axes to be? This is my time axis, and this is my uh, displacement axis, right? Um, the time axis there, t equals zero, uh, sorry, x equals zero, what it represents is the origin. Where did we say the origin was? It's the ground, right? So at the very least, I've got parts on this graph that don't exist. Namely, uh, this part can't exist, right? So, so it has to end there. In addition, at least, this part of the graph can't exist because for the same reason. But there's another part of the graph that also can't exist, right? I'm trying to put forward this graph as a reflection of what is happening to the ball, right? What's time zero? What does that represent? The initial condition, where it starts, right? Now, in this situation, what is happening before time zero? You've got a couple of choices. You can either say nothing, right? Because I'm just considering it here. Or alternatively, you can say it's just there at one meter above the ground, right? So if I really wanted this graph, this displacement time graph, to represent what the ball was doing, really, I should have something like this, shouldn't I? Right, because it's just, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe something like this, because I'm, you know, waving my arms around, kind of thing, okay? And the point is, you know, even if that is what the graph is doing, if that's what the ball is doing, I'm not really interested in that. All I'm really interested in is, is this, which is the part that I can analyze and apply some calculus to, okay? So therefore, what I should say is, let's just take that part of math, but instead, let's just put some restrictions on it, okay? So, whatever, whatever that is, right? I'm going to be restricting my time domain from naught to whatever that is, and I don't know what it is yet. Now, not only do I not know where that is, but I also don't know where this is, right? At the moment on my graph, it looks like it's about two meters. Now, I know, you know, you probably look at me and think, yeah, you probably can't lift. But I can tell you, I can throw a ball higher than two meters in the air, okay? So, I mean, this is a problem. I need to fix this up. I need to know where, where this is, and I need to know where this is. So how do we do that? You've got tons of different ways to do it. Okay, so for instance, let's take them one at a time. Let's work out, let's work out what this guy is. Okay. Now, you've got lots of ways to do this. You can think, okay, I want to know where the stationary point is. Thankfully for you, you don't need to differentiate this guy because you already have the derivative, right? So you can come back up to here, which is the same as saying, where, where is the ball not moving? So you can, you can solve this guy, okay? So you can say, when the velocity is zero, and we'll solve our velocity equation, okay? So you've got this. Yeah? So doing it all in one sweep, I'm going to get 15 on 9.8. So about 1.5, thereabouts, okay? So that's what that's telling me. That's about 1.5 or something like that, okay? Approximately. Right? Now, I actually wasn't interested in where it was in terms of time. I'm interested in how high did the ball go. So how do I get that? I'm going to take this value, this, and I'm going to put it into my displacement equation. Okay. So one of the things that um, is sort of like the extra leap between, you might feel like applications of calculus to the physical world, it's just... It's just differentiating and integrating stuff I've known before, right? But one of the things that's um, tricky, this is why I called it, ah, uh, oh, that's wrong. I should say motion equations, sorry. One of the things that's routinely present in these kinds of questions is that you always have multiple equations. Sometimes you have got two objects, so you might have six equations or something crazy like that, okay? So, you have to be careful about how they interact with each other. I want to take this time and stick it into my displacement equation. So let's do that. Uh, so I'll say, when. Okay, what am I going to get? Negative 4.9 times 
15 on 9.8 all squared plus 15 times 15 on 9.8 plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to get a decimal out for this. It'll be a bit gross, but at least I'll know what ballpark I'm in, right? So, by the way, the way I recommend that you do this, it's probably worth um, reminding you, is that when you get to this point, and you've got whatever that number is, let's do it. When you've got, well, 75 on 49 is what my calculator says, or 1.53. When you've got that there, rather than typing that in repeatedly, just store it as a variable on your calculator. So if you couldn't remember how to do that, you want to go shift. Um, the button which says recall has store above it. So there's the recall button, but there's store above, which is actually what you want. And then you pick a letter, right? So for example, I might pick A, uh, which is above the, it's above the negative sign. Okay. So store that into A. And on the display, it'll say answer into A. So now you can use that 15 on 9.8 wherever you like, okay? So now I can just stick it into here. Okay, so what do we get? What value do you get? Check it against what I've got. Let's do, let's do two decimal places, shall we? Anyone got an answer? 12.5? Okay, yeah, that's to a one decimal place. Um, so I'm getting 12.47959 and so on. Okay, so that's approximately equal to 12.48 meters. Does that mesh with reality? Does that make sense? I, I think that's pretty reasonable. I think I can throw a ball 12 meters in the air. I think I can throw it further than 12 meters in the air, actually. So that's reasonable. That's okay. So immediately we know now this graph is pretty bogus, right? Uh, if that's one meter, then my stationary point should be way up here off the board on my scale anyway, okay? <laughs> so maybe what you should have done when you were graphing is realize that you need this piece of information in order to get your scale right, okay? So instead of going here first, uh, maybe do that roughly so you know what features you're trying to work out. And then do this so you actually can work out the scale. What was the other piece of information I was after? I wanted to know where it hit the ground, right? So I want to know this value here. So what am I going to have to solve to get that? Which equation? I want displacement equals zero, don't I? Okay, so I'm going to take the displacement equation and obviously I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula, right? So let's do that. It's a quadratic in T, so that's why I've got T equals and I'll go, okay, what do we got? Negative 15 plus or minus the square root of 225 minus 4 lots of negative 4.9. So far so good? All over 2 lots of negative 4.9. Okay, now immediately at this point, I have the advantage, I suppose this is a benefit uh, from having graphed this, okay? See how I start here, right? I started at 1, right? So I have to know that one of my, one of the roots, right, has to be for negative t. So I can automatically exclude that. I don't, I haven't evaluated any of this at all, but I already know it's going to be over here, okay? So straight away, I can say, um, I can ignore this value. I'll show you as I do it. Let's go 15. Um, it's actually going to be this one. 225 <laughs> plus 4 times 4.9 all over negative 9.8. I can exclude one of the answers immediately, right? Because the other one will be negative, right? Oh, no, sorry. Exclude the answer that is negative. So I would say that here. Time is positive. Actually, well, time can include zero, so zero and positive, but I'm excluding one. The reason why I included the negative is because... Because there's a negative down the bottom, right? So I actually want this one, plus, plus. Plus, all right? So there you go. Get your calculator out again. Don't forget your brackets. <coughs> okay, I've got a value. Has someone got one they can check against my... Yeah, good. So let me, let me get all the decimal points. 3.126. Four, and so on. Okay, now, 
again, before I do anything with it, does that make sense? Is it sensible? Well, it sure is a sensible value. It's about double what you expected here, which we got by a completely different way, by the way. Um, it does look about right. It's not, it's not exactly double though, is it? Because we started a meter off the ground, but it's close. So I'm getting this. So this is seconds, and this was meters. Okay. So the kinds of questions you could pose of this are, for instance, well, how long is it traveling through the air? There you go, there's an answer, right? And we needed it in order to actually graph it with some accuracy. A follow-up question you might ask is, well, how far does the ball travel in total? How would you work that out? How far does the ball travel in total? You have a couple of alternatives, okay? I'm going to give you one, and then I'm gonna let you think about the other one um, on your own for a minute, okay? Because we've gone through all the effort of graphing this, number one, and because it's a fairly simple shape, number two, I think your best option is to look at this thing, actually get the number right, it was 12 something, and then say, look, there are two parts to the journey, right? It goes up, and then it goes down, right? So therefore, all you need to do is work out that distance and add it to that distance. That's all. That's the total distance, right? Um, you don't need any fancy calculus for that. We said that that was about 12, so, sorry, that was about 12, so therefore that must be about 11. This is the actual total distance, about 12. So you're expecting to get in the 23 ball mark, ballpark, right? Um, you'll obviously have some weird decimals flying around in there. Oh, 0.9495, something like that, okay? But you can work out the exact answer, okay? Now, that's not the only way you could work out the total distance. How else could you do it? Hmm. Now, I'm going to let you have a go at that. Um, I've already told you what you ought to expect in terms of the number, right? How would you go about doing it by area under the curve? I'll let you have a go at that now. <coughs> 